Okay, look, I get it. This one's super controversial, but look, before you take to the comment section trying to cancel me, just hear me out. Pantheon is stupid. Hey, you know what? This sounds really familiar. Except, Pantheon is still stupid. Now, I get it, I made this exact video just over a year ago, right before I rode Pantheon. Like, as soon as I saw Pantheon, I made this video public. And, well, you guys didn't really take to that video too well. Anyway, here we are, two more trips, four more visits to BGW, and nine rides later on Pantheon, I can still confidently say this ride sucks. Now for the topics that I covered in my prequel video, some of them I actually still agree with, and well, now actually riding the coaster, some of my opinions have actually changed. While I totally recommend watching the first video I made, as I think I made some pretty good points, for its time, it was totally out of left field and extremely controversial. For those of you guys who have seen the video and need a quick recap, I called Pantheon out for being a budget cut piece of garbage. That could have been a giga. Easily best coaster in Virginia, maybe even top 10 in the world, but it absolutely shit the bucket. So, if that makes you want to go watch that other video, the offer still stands. So taking the exact same format as the last video, I'm going to talk on what my thoughts are now actually riding this coaster. So, this model. Well, I mean, if we're talking about Intamin Blitzes, then I don't really hate the model. I love the traditional Blitz coasters like Taiga, Maverick, Terran, and so on. But like I stated in the first video, it's these swing launches I just, I really don't get. Now, granted, they are starting to grow on me a little bit, but overall, they're still just really awkward and still a massive gimmick. Okay, well, Michael, what do you mean they're a massive gimmick? Uh, well, <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's just the fact that this also accounts for literally half the ride. Like, I can't tell you on any other coaster where a launch sequence accounts for half of the coaster. Like, I get it, we're going backwards, and then we're going faster, but I really don't want to feel the same elements three different times. And then what, that gives you an excuse to cheat me out of a coaster that's actually fulfilling? I can't even tell you how unfulfilling this section is. The launches are absolutely garbage. The rollback is a neat feeling, I will admit, and the spike is interesting. This remains to be the only saving grace of this part of the ride and actually left me pleasantly surprised after my first ride. It's hard to get this feeling of ejector on any other coaster during a launch, especially at this speed and going backwards. Amazing. Pantheon executes this really nicely. There's just one problem. I know, right? This element, at least in my experience, proves to be extremely inconsistent. Some rides, it would give me the most violent pop of ejector sending my gut into my lap bar, and then on other rides, I would even go as far to say that this was subpar flow ejector. Oh, that's not great. Now I get that the LSMs are to blame here, as every train of riders is going to be different and the ride system has to account for that. It just sucks that in return, one of the better moments on this ride gets sacrificed. I was so right. Like, I don't think I've ever been more right in my entire life. I claimed that this layout was going to be hot garbage, and it was hot garbage. Obviously, we already talked about the swing launches, and before we move on from there, it's worth mentioning the beginning of this ride. This launch is clearly nothing special, as the only point of it is to give you some speed to make it over to the swing launch. This 0G roll, 0G winder, it's great. Lovely. I, I freaking love it. Look, when it comes to our beloved zero G rolls, it goes one of two ways. You have the zero G rolls that show no mercy and haul absolute ass through the element. And then on the other hand, you have the ones that take their time and let everything marinate for a hot second, giving your thighs time to get to know the lap bar. What I'm trying to say is the slower ones usually offer some form of hang time. And I say usually because some slower zero G rolls struggle with that for some reason. Pantheon, on the other hand, has no struggle at all. This zero-g roll in particular excels in giving some wild hang time. All right, these are weird. I don't really like them. You kind of navigate them at a speed where it's too slow to get any forces, but it's just fast enough to let everything from your torso up lean to the side of which the apex of the hill is like pushing you. And because of that, it feels almost unnatural and your body just wants to lean the opposite way to counter that odd feeling. 
All right, so we already touched on the swing launch section. Let's move on to that drop. I don't know what it is about this drop, but my lord is it good. This is by far the best element of the ride. And for whatever reason, the pacing of the top hat being slower actually works in its favor. The back row provides you with a very strong pop of the finest ejector that Intamin has to offer. And the beyond vertical drop, while it doesn't really do much, to help you with the beyond vertical feeling, it definitely helps out a lot in the force department. Overall, the execution of this drop is beautiful and is perfect. Uh, I mean, wow, never thought I'd say that. Excellent job, Pantheon. Now, if only I had such lovely things to say about the rest of the layout. What the hell is this element? Like, why is it a thing? It's terrible, literally hot garbage. If you have ever said in your life that this element is good, or it hits, just, I refuse to believe you. Over four visits in nine rides, I mean, rides in 96 degree weather, night rides right after that 96 degree day, drizzle rides, cool morning rides, never once has this element attempted to even pull anything. No forces, no speed, no pacing just extreme awkwardness on this hill that is just banked way too much and is way too tall. The only way that this element will do anything for you is if you literally do all the work for the coaster and ragdoll. You know, just throw yourself to the side of the train. I feel like this whole ragdoll thing only gets mentioned with this coaster. Pantheon is really fun if you just ragdoll on it. Yes, because this subpar coaster refuses to pull any real forces, so I'm just gonna fake it all. I mean, faking is making, am I right? All right, after cruising through the biggest disappointment of 2022, you hit one of the best elements of the ride. Like, I see why this is some people's favorite part of the ride, and I am all for glazing the crap out of this stall. It's good. It's really good. The hang time combined with those lap bars, along with the actual length of the stall. I won't even lie, it's probably top five stalls for me. And maybe for some of you, it's even top three. So moving on to the theme. Wait, hang on. Hold up a sec. Oh, yeah, that's right. There's still two more elements to talk about. Jeez, how forgettable. So this hand chopper is there, somewhat noticeable, but gets the effect taken away because of how fast you are going. And Pantheon is not the only coaster to struggle from this. Wildcat's Revenge at Hershey Park also has multiple hand choppers that aren't even noticeable because of the sheer speed and pacing of that coaster. Anyway, back to Pantheon. This last sequence of the coaster is really confusing to me because it's like Intamin thought to themselves, oh wait, we forgot to make this coaster intense. So, in the last 500 feet, we're gonna try our best to fix that. I mean, this maneuver, whatever it may be, is cool and kind of fun to traverse, but other than that, it doesn't pull anything. I mean, that's kind of a common theme here, am I right? It, this is fun. It's just fun. Nothing more, nothing less. This is, this is close to being intense though. Okay, and the wave turn. Or... What is that? Wall stall? Okay, whatever. And this again with the trying to be intense with the last 500 feet of a coaster. Intimate, you should have just stuck to what you were good at and made this a good classic stangle dive. That would have slapped. A Skyrush level. Maverick level stangle dive. Along with this switchback actually being intense. That would have been a perfect finale for this ride. Actually going to an alternate universe with this modified ending would have probably actually made this coaster half bearable. I mean, you have the zero G roll, which is so good. These are just weird. The swing launch is mostly bad. The drop is fantastic. <laughs> don't even, don't even get me started on that pathetic piece of The stall into the actually good switchback into an amazing stangle dive would have been so good. Okay, I think I'm finally done now. Let's move on. The next thing that just drives me up the wall with this coaster is the theme. What happened to your money management? Look at these animations. This concept is amazing. And what did you do? Plop a stone down with a couple of concrete paths and call it a day. You went from this to this. I mean, this just screams budget cuts to me. 
You're freaking Bush Gardens Williamsburg. You constantly get praised for being one of the most beautiful parks in the world. Last I checked, the Pantheon didn't look like a pavilion in a grass field. It's just embarrassing. You even let Six Flags theme a wild mouse better than your flagship attraction. So I'm sorry, I know I'm coming off a bit harsh here, but with the amount of potential this had, I should be even more angry than I already am. Okay, so it turns out I'm actually mad now. I'm going to trash this ride for its horrendous theme even more. First off, I want to say that I still stand by everything that I said in the first video 1000%. In fact, I think I took it a little too easy on Busch Gardens Williamsburg. Look, I blame the theme on COVID, all these budget cuts, but now I'm really starting to lose hope. Look, this coaster is going into its third season and the park is showing no initiative to theme this ride any further. This station looks like garbage. I mean, obviously for Busch Garden standards, but I'm even talking about like Six Flag standards. This thing is atrocious. It just looks so tacky. I mean, compare it to every other station in this park. Verbolton Station looks amazing. Griffin has those massive lighting fixtures and the really neat queue. Then you got Alpengeist, where it looks like a massive ski lodge in the Alps. And then over here, we have a station that is, well, a step below basic. I feel like you actually have to try hard to make something look so budget cut and cheap. Actually, talking about something that's cheap, let's talk about that queue line. Well, first off, actually, what queue line? Where, where is it? I have yet to find it. Cause like, this cannot be it, right? Not only is this way too short, on no planet would this crew be anywhere fast enough to keep up with the line. I'm starting to lose all hope that this park is actually going to attempt to theme this ride at all. Not only did we get a ride this year that is 200 times more themed than Pantheon, but it also doesn't seem like it's in their agenda to come back to this problem anytime soon. The investment that it would take to theme Pantheon and undo all the wrong that they have already done is so astronomically large that I feel like they would just be better off announcing this as its own theming and doing nothing else that year. What happened to this? Where did this go? When are we getting this? The lack of on-ride theming is fine and completely understandable, but for a park and chain like this, it's most definitely not out of the picture. And when you show us renderings like that, it kind of says, hey, I'm gonna try. And then you do this. It's mildly disappointing. I'm sorry, not mildly, it's very disappointing. But this is what I would like to see. You're in the same park as Dark Coaster and Verbolton. Some form of on-ride theming doesn't seem to be too far out of the question. So what are you implying, Michael? Well, fellow viewer, let me tell you. I think that this was a missed opportunity to make this very, very large, very, very flat plot of land a Roman city. You see, you cross over this bridge into the plaza where Pantheon is located. This would be a pretty good entrance to Rome. I mean, the park could give this town theme to Rome a special name and get this, a really, really cool centerpiece to your Roman city could be the Pantheon, the actual building, not the coaster. But in our case, it would just be the coaster station. Now, for the actual ride, we will still use the gods, but we're gonna make it way less tacky. First off, we're not gonna conquer the gods. I've always hated that, and when you actually put more than five seconds of thought into it, you see that it just really doesn't make any sense. In my dream version of Pantheon, we're not gonna conquer the gods. We're going to take the shapes of our gods in our own very special way. The gods grant us their power and each individual god shows us what they can do. Not only that, they are giving us a tour of this city, this holy city that they built for their people. That is my dream version of Pantheon. Now, if you're interested in seeing that, leave a comment down below and who knows, maybe I'll build it in like no limits or something. But could you just imagine just soaring through Roman architecture during the lower parts of this coaster. That would be awesome. And all of that theming would easily make up for the lackluster, uninspiring, lazy layout. It also doesn't seem to be too far out of the picture. While it would be extremely pricey, they have done stuff like this before. Think of Big Bad Wolf in the Village. 
and the park's complexity of how it was built due to the terrain is probably maybe equivalent to making Pantheon look like Terran or something straight out of Fantasialand. I don't really know. In the end, there's just a lot of potential here, and it's sad that it really just got wasted. I don't really have too much else to talk about today. It felt good to get all of that off my chest. I would say let me know what you guys think of this video, but I know that none of you are going to agree with this. So let's try and get this video to at least three likes. That's to combat the five dislikes that this video already has. Today's shout out goes to Tenso. If you guys want a shout out, all you have to do is leave a comment down below. If I like it, then I'll be sure to feature you guys in the next Coaster Talk video. With all that being said, I really do hope you guys enjoyed today's very controversial video. I'll see you guys in the next one.